Hello and welcome to another episode of the Wannabe Entrepreneur, the podcast about what's really like to bootstrap a company. My name is Tiago, I'm your host, and as you can see, I'm still kind of recovering from a cold. Turns out cold showers are not so good. <laughs> I'm joking. I got this cold from my partner. I, I don't think it's related to cold showers. In fact, I... I got on the cold showers since I, I was recovering from this cold. I, I'm i not that addicted to it, but I actually feel it. I feel that I'm missing on, on these showers. It, it quickly became part of my routine and I want to go back. And uh, yeah, but that's why probably my voice is a little bit nosy. But uh, hopefully this won't impact this episode because, well, it's a very... It's, I think it's, it's, it's an intense one. Yeah, that's the word. It's very intense. Because for the past week, I was building one product, Pod Squeeze, right? I told you that I was trying to build one product every week. And at the same time, there's so many things happening, including this, this cold, which is actually not the worst thing that happened in terms of stress. So, yeah, that's, that's what today's episode is going to be. It's going to be about my, my week and about building Pod Squeeze, the ups and downs of that journey. Today's sponsor is Social Juice. So Social Juice is a way for you to collect testimonials and video testimonials for your product. Again, the, the owner, the maker of this product is an indie maker. It's from our community. And I'll be talking more about Social Juice in, uh, in the episode. But yeah, thank you so much for uh, sponsoring the Wannabe Entrepreneur. And yeah, before I just get started, let me say that uh, I hope you enjoyed the conversation I had with Agobert. It took me a long time to edit. I know it was late. I was always promising and I kind of learned my lesson. I don't want to promise anymore because it's, again, stress and uh, I feel that I'm, I'm failing on you. But yeah, I still have now two co- really interesting conversations in the pipelines. Uh, one with Thibaut, another one with Simo and um, Yossi. It's, it's, it's really cool. I think you, you'll enjoy it. But again, I, I don't want to promise when they'll be out. But soon, let's say. I, I, I don't want to wait months, right? So that basically the conversation, uh, the things we discussed do not apply anymore. So I wanted to make it relatively soon. But yeah, thank you for listening to the podcast and uh, if you want to send me messages or ask me questions you can do so at wb tiago now without any further ado let's get started with today's episode i'm a very creative person I love being creative and having new ideas. Actually, not long ago, my partner, uh, as I was telling another good good idea for me, at least it was a good idea. She was like, don't you get tired of getting ideas? And actually, I don't. I love it. And I remember being a kid that do not like, it was really hard for me to fall asleep. Because probably I'm a night owl. It's now midnight and I'm recording this uh, episode. But I remember my parents having a lot of trouble putting me to sleep. Because I couldn't fit in into this school schedule. Or like going to bed at 9 or 10, whatever. I couldn't. So I would just lay awake in bed. And that was terrifying. Because I had so many ideas. And I couldn't just lay low and, and do nothing. And wait to basically fall asleep. But I think that kind of changed. That changed afterwards when I was able to, first of all, select my own schedules, sleeping schedules. And then the the bad time became a time of wonder and creativity, a time where I could just kind of dream while I was awake. And the cool thing about things that happen only in your brain is that they are very achievable. When you are sleeping, for instance... Let, let me tell you a story of, 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 a, of a dream I had 
one of those like crazy dreams. So I was asleep, right? And it was probably already close to morning. And then I was dreaming with this magician. He was in front of me. And then I just remembered this. The magician looking at me and said, your phone will ring in three, two, one, bam. And then I woke up and my phone was ringing. The alarm clock was ringing. And I was like, what? This is crazy. How is it possible? Like, how did this magician know? <laughs> and then uh, not so long, I kind of realized what actually happened. Probably most of you are already thinking, okay, I know what happened. So our brains are really, really clever. And since we wanted to continue sleeping as long as we can, we have this way of kind of integrating the um, what's happening around us, like the sounds, in our dreams. So that because of that, we can sleep a little bit longer. So that's basically what happened. The alarm clock was obviously already ringing. And then I just incorporated it in my dream. Same when I was speaking German in my dreams or English. For me, I was speaking really well. But in reality, it doesn't matter because I'm the own controlling dream. I know what I'm saying, right? So if I know what I'm saying, if I'm controlling the whole storyline, I can speak German or Chinese or whatever. It will always sound good for me. What I want to say with this is that when you're dreaming, when you're in this dream world, things are just very achievable. And sometimes I, I really dream about being an indie hacker, a successful indie hacker, whatever that means. But very often, I, I imagine coming to this podcast and say, hey, everyone, want to be entrepreneurs? I've made it. I am now making, whatever, 5K MRR from my product. I don't need a boss. I don't need to do any freelancing. My products are paying the bills. In fact, I'm actually able to save money. This is really, really simple and easy and achievable to dream of, right? I do it every time. I, I can easily imagine myself saying this to you. But it's not the same as actually managing to reach that goal. Because to do that, it's extremely hard work. It's really, really hard. As I, I look back and I see, okay, it's almost two years in, since I, I've started, I start to think, when is this going to stop? Will I ever feel like it feels that I'm just getting worse, that my MRR goes up and then goes down again, and it, it just doesn't grow. It doesn't grow as much as some of the others, uh, even in, in the community and in, in Twitter. And oh, It can be really frustrating. It can be really frustrating. So... I decided to change my strategy because I really believe to be a good entrepreneur, we should always try to be rational and adapt, adapt really fast. So I decided to change my strategy. As I, you probably remember, I said, I want to do an episode, episode, no, not an episode. I want to do a product per week, one different product every week. And the first one, which when we were brainstorming, we had the idea of pot squeeze. I love the name, by the way. I'm so proud. I'm so proud of this name. So the idea of pot squeeze is you get a, your podcast episode and you squeeze all the information out of it. You can repurpose content. You can write blog posts, tweets, show notes, everything. And it's, it's kind of magic. And the cool thing is that it's magic for you and for me. Because the AI does most of the work. Or at least that's what I thought. <laughs> I thought it was going to be really easy. I just wanted to get a service that trans transcribed the episode, which are really a lot of them. And then put it in GPT. Done. We have, we, have, we have it done. I was exploring with the community a lot with GPT-3, the API. And yeah, it seemed possible. So he said, yeah, that's our first product. That's what we are going to do. We are going to do a very simple UI, very simple design. And the idea is that people can use their um, um, RSS feed, which is basically the feed. It's 
when you when you open it, you see basically an XML with all the information of your podcast. And this is what Spotify and Apple Music uses to always be up to date to your podcast. Every podcast uh, podcaster knows their RSS feed. And, okay, they can just put it there, select one episode, and convert. And we would just call one API, very simple, call one API to get it tra transcribed, call GPT-3, and basically present this to the user. I thought this was also a great way to use AI because ChatGPT already covers a lot of a lot of um, cases, but what ChatGPT doesn't have is access to your current information, access to your podcast, for instance. So I thought that by combining these two, we were facilitating the whole process and we could make some money out of it. People would think it was valuable. I will tell you the whole adventure of building pod squeeze, the ups and downs. But before, let me just introduce today's sponsor, which is socialjuice.io. It's a tool created by a fellow in the hacker center, and this tool will help you in collecting testimonials, both written and video testimonials from your clients. We already talked about the whole process of collecting testimonials. It works really, really well. You can import it. You can as well have your own page. You can actually customize your page to collect these testimonials. All of that can be done with social juice. But today, let's talk about how you can manage these testimonials. First of all, the moment you get a testimonial from a client, it won't be public just out of the bat. You actually need to approve it. So you'll get a notification, an email from social juice. Then you can just go there and check it out, make sure that everything is fine, and then you can make it public. There's a couple of interesting things you can do with your testimonials. You can edit them. You can as well share them in multiple social media. You can download the video and you can actually convert it to a GIF so that you can share it on Reddit or Twitter or wherever you want. So those are really, really handy features. Besides that, once you have your wall of testimonials and you are ready to share them, you can select between a different varieties of uh, testimonial walls or wall of love, as they call it. You have your sliders, your tiles, and a lot of different really beautiful designs. And one cool thing is that once you hover with your mouse on top of the video, it actually starts playing, you know, like on YouTube. It's really, really cool. And then you can easily integrate it in your website. And one thing that I didn't know, Social Juice actually uses web standards, which means that it's compatible with all the website builders, being that Shopify, Notion, WordPress, you name it. That's really interesting. And actually, in a tutorial video, you can see how easy it is to basically click and then insert this widget in your website. So... There's no excuses for you not to have a beautiful wall of love with all the testimonials from your clients, which will most likely increase your conversion rate. And that's it for today's sponsors. You can start using Social Juice for free at socialjuice.io. And once you are ready to upgrade to a paid plan, we got you covered. You can use the WBE code and get 25% off. All the relevant links for you to access Social Juice discounts and check out their tool are in the show notes of today's episode. So you can just go there and check it out. And that's it for today's sponsor section. Now, back to Pod Squeeze. I told you that Joe and I brainstormed and we thought that this would be a good idea. Now it was time to build it. So we started to work on it. Joe and I. We sat down together actually, actually each one of us in their own houses but you know quite often we work with a camera on or something just like to exchange ideas he was doing the design and i was implementing it and we already introduced something we learned from our past collaboration if you remember that episode when uh, i think it's something i'm confronting my co-founder that's the title i gave it to it and one of the things that we were always disagreeing in was the margins and the, the, um, the CSS, the design was not good. Because something that I don't like doing, 
So João kind of learned how to do it. And now what we decided was, okay, I will make the structure, but then João will actually put everything together and make it nice and shiny. And that's what we did. We did that and it was working really well. The integration with the transcription server was really easy, really easy to do. And I, I've done it in maybe one or two hours or so. The structure of the website was basically the same as the Indie Lottery, so I didn't waste too much time there. I think we actually wasted more time trying to decide in the name than basically building this first part of the website. It was really hard. And you probably know if you tried already to buy a domain, you know, especially if you want a .com, it's so hard because most of your ideas will be already picked. So you n really need to get creative. That's why I was so happy with Pod Squeeze because for me it made to total sense. For João, I'm not sure if he's total convinced about it, but I think he can live with it. So yeah, that, that first part was easy and it was fast. And we have done it in maybe one day. One, one day after we already had kind of the structure and the design and the first things um, were working fine. And then I started doing the rest. So first of all, I'm using Google Functions. It's still the, the way I do things. It's just easy for me. But of course, the, the descriptions, they take some time, depending on, the, um, depending on the duration of the episode. They take time and they are... They're not expensive, expensive, but they cost around uh, two cents per minute. So we always needed to calculate this, right? Then we knew that we, are, we were going to spend some money before actually releasing the product because GPT-3 is paid and this transcription service is paid, but we were okay with that. It's the first time actually that I'm building something. It's the first time I'm building a SaaS, first of all. And it's the first time that I'm building something that I actually have to pay to use. Mostly, I always tried to make it 100% free. But it was fine, and we were splitting both of it. So, we, we were doing this, and then, since I, I was already playing with it before with the community, I knew what GPT-3 was capable of. I didn't think that I should test it. I thought that if there was a problem, the problem would be in the transcription API side, never in GPT-3. But there was a problem. That was the first challenge we actually had. I was trying to implement everything and then just think about it. One episode, this episode, will be around maybe 30, 40 minutes. It's a lot of text. It's a big transcription. I'm just talking and talking and talking. So the inputs that I'm giving to GB3 is, are huge, really, really big. But I never thought it was a problem. I thought it was just very, very smart and I could just give it and it would process it super fast. So I added the first episode, basically the pilot episode of this podcast, which is basically, I think, one and a half minutes, worked fine. Everything was fine, and it was already kind of summarizing. I was like, okay, this is good. Then I said, okay, let's try to bring Peter Level's um, interview, which is a big one, one hour and a half or something. And then, bam, crash. You know, if you're a developer, you probably know in your terminal, you see all of these letters and the error that you already know, and y y your brain, the moment sees that already feels, whoa. And there's always, by the way, two different reactions. One is, okay, I was expecting to fail, and you feel okay. Uh, you feel that you are closer to fixing the bug because now you can see what, what caused the error. And then when it's something that you are not uh, expecting, you always feel you know, it's disappointed. So I looked at it and what is this? I read the message and it was saying too many tokens. And then there was like some weird math, like 3,000 plus 1,000, it's more than, uh, I don't know, 3,900. And what is this? I don't get it. It turns out that GPT-3 has a limit. And it's not a simple limit. It's the limit that you have is, let's say it's around 4,000 tokens. Okay, and we'll get to the tokens afterwards. And this 4,000 includes your prompt, so basically the input you're giving, plus the output it's giving you back. So you need to make the calculation to make sure that these combined are not bigger than 4,000 tokens. And a token 
you can imagine a token as being a word, which is really not a word because it also considers like dots, expl expl explanation, no, exclamation points, everything. So, okay, that's fine. That's a challenge. Something to to kind of understand and, and see um, how to how to overcome. And at first I even thought, okay, this will take us a little bit more time, but it's actually good because I had this impression that I was doing something really simple, just basically combining one plus one and everyone would be able to copy. Uh, so it's good to have like a little bit of a challenge, right? So that it's not easy for everyone to basically copy, that we are actually bringing value as well for the user. But then there's a huge problem, which is how do you split it, right? Because let's say we want to do the show notes. How do you do the show notes? Because you cannot just say summarize this, then summarize the next, summarize the next, because then afterwards you cannot just simply append everything and have the show notes. So we had to basically use GPT to summarize every chunk. So we, we split the transcription into chunks, then we use GPT to summarize it, and then we put all of this into another GPT prompt that would eventually then create the show notes. And this is so hard. It's so hard because you always lose information. So you need to like really make the query to the point that keeps all the relevant information. And at the same time, the chunk in the middle, right, does not understand the context. So let's say that I'm interviewing Peter Levels. And in, in the beginning, in the first chunk, I introduce myself, I introduce Peter Levels, and I introduce the context of the episode. And I do that. Everything works fine. But then, in chunk number four, I'm just speaking, and Peter Levels is speaking back, and in my transcription, I don't have the names, because it's automatically created, so I just say speaker one, speaker two. And then, like, it just lost all the context, completely. Lost all the context completely, and what I thought it would be a few hours turned out in many hours, then it turned out in days because we couldn't figure that out. And then Joao and I were, we actually sat together, we were playing around with different prompts and we saw the money that we were spending, which is not a lot, granted. Like so far we spent it around 60 bucks. But, you know, for, for indie hackers that have no money, they want to do this every week. It's not easy. It's really not easy. So we were really frustrated and it was kind of João and me taking turns in, in being pessimistic. It felt like that. I was sometimes saying, okay, this won't work. And João would say, no, let's do it. And then the opposite. <laughs> it was really hard. But then we eventually figured it out. We figured out how to basically manage all of that, all the speakers and... And, yeah, in the end, it took, I think, more than, yeah, we, know we are now in maybe nine days or so. I quickly realized that, okay, uh, making one product a week is really hard. And it's really hard as well, because as I was doing this, my other projects were still, and, and João's other projects were still requiring our attention. And this is really stressful, because we want to launch... Pod squeeze. We only spend a lot of time on it. But at the same time, my freelance client and drone freelance clients, they are paying for our work and they need our output. And I have my other businesses, right? I have this podcast. I had to edit the conversation with Dagobert, right? That took me a long time. And I feel that I was failing towards you because I wanted to release that. And I had the community. So it's a lot of things piling up, a lot of things that I'm putting on the side, squeezing in and saying, hey, wait one more hour, one more day. I'll, I'll tackle you in one day. I just need to finish this. But then there was problem after problem and errors after errors after errors. And then it kind of culminated into yesterday. Yesterday I had such a down downer day. It was really, really bad because... 
even though we had fixed a lot of the issues we had before, sometimes if the query is not just right, the results might be really, really bad. You really need to learn. It's funny because uh, I think a lot of people are already saying that the next job will be to understand how to make queries like for, for or prompts for GPT and for AI. Like we know how to communicate with Google, for instance, to get the information we want, the same we will need to do for GPT. And we were sometimes we would have really shitty results, sometimes we had amazing results, and this could be one hour apart. In one hour, we could fix that issue. But yesterday, I don't know, both of us were very pessimistic. We were looking at it, and since we were, we were expecting this to be a bit easier to implement, and we are all putting secretly a lot of hopes in these projects. Even though we want to do one every week, we want the first one to be already amazing, right? We want to get paid soon rather than later. So we were really disappointed when the results were not good and where Joan was saying, yeah, no, this is not good. This is not working fine. No one will like it. Me as well. And then Joan just wanted to release it, but I, I didn't feel it was ready yet. Because at some point, I was also afraid to release it too soon because I, I I didn't want it to disappoint myself and the others, right? And then it was towards the end of the day. And just for you to understand, it was like really long day. I was still a bit sick, recovering. Because the whole weekend, I was basically working and, and being sick and recovering and everything. And at the same time, as things were not working fine, and as we basically finished a two or three hours call, with something not working, I open the community, my Slack, and I see two messages that really drag me down. Really, really, really. First message was from Mark, Mark LG, and he was saying, hey, Tiago, some, some guy from the community took my email and add me to some spamming email list. And I don't know, I really felt bad. Felt bad because I thought it was a consequence of poor strategy from my side. Because I opened up the community for guests, which allowed people with not so good intentions to to join. And then the fact that Mark, which is kind of a mentor as well for, for, for me and, and for the community, uh, not only the WB community, but in general, the Indie Makers community, saying this made me feel that I failed to him and to the other members. And then I opened the other channel and one of our members, someone that has been very active in the past uh, months, basically said, hey, I'm leaving this community. It's just not valuable for me anymore. Bye. And just wrote this. And I read this. I, I was so surprised because I didn't know anything. And, and then I just felt, shit. I, I look away. I look away for just a little bit and this is happening, which is absolutely wrong. This would have happened anyways, right? Even if I was working in the community every day, this would have happened. Nothing could have uh, basically um, prevented this. But and that's how I felt. I felt that it was my fault. And at the same time, I feel a little bit bad because the community, I know for sure, there's something that I cannot work for a long time on it because it just doesn't pay enough. But at the same time, these people, these clients, they're my friends as well. And if I let the community to basically deteriorate, 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 I, I can never say this word, sorry. If I let the community uh, degrade, okay, it's better. I feel that they will also see that as my failure. As like, okay, Tiago makes bad products. That's how I feel. If that's true or not, I don't know. But that's how I feel. And at the same time, I don't want to kill it and say like, sometimes I just feel it. I just feel I should just make it, either close it or make it free for everyone and that's it. And then I wouldn't I wouldn't feel bad uh, and I wouldn't feel like I was letting them down. But at the same time, I feel, no, Tiago, I mean, you've built this and it's something with value. And this is still, even though it's not paying a lot, it's still some money and you need it. You need everything. You cannot be picky, right? Yeah. So this really dragged me down. And I just looked back to these two years of indie hacking. I think, what am I doing? What are you doing, Tiago? Come on. 
Is this really necessary? All this struggle. And sometimes I see others, they're doing this on the side and they seem so much happier. Yeah. That was really, really a bummer. That was really a bummer. I remember, uh, I think it was today that Dagobert shared something interesting on Twitter, uh, a video, a video, no, a picture of his uh, setup. And he said that there's a little post-it in the corner of this uh, screen that says, when everything is going down, remember that at least you're, you are your own boss or, or something like that. Or like, remember, just remember the times when you had a, a boss. And yeah, it's true. I mean, it, this is still much better than that. But yeah, it's, it's so hard to, to come from a job when you're really paid well. And then suddenly be struggling for money, which is basically what I'm doing. And that's what I feel I'm doing. I'm struggling for money, right? I always feel that I am I can always start making money if I want it, which is true. But for that, I need to stop doing what I'm doing. I need to stop being an indie hacker. So in, in practice, I am actually struggling for money. And it's, it's shit. It's really a bad situation to be in. So yeah, that was... A bad day. That was really a bad day. But then, the cool things about the bad days is that they also end. <laughs> like good days, bad days also end. There's always the sunset for bad days as well. And then the next day, things it's like a, a fresh new start. Your brain is more relaxed. I don't know what happens while you sleep, but all of the stress that is accumulated kind of attenuates a little bit. So I started solving problem by problem. How to solve the community problem, the, the spammers problem. Okay, why do people have access to the emails? Is it possible to hide them? It is, actually. Why didn't I do that? Okay, Tiago, don't, don't, uh, don't punish yourself again. Just hide the emails, send a message to everyone, and say, hey, sorry, this happened, my bad, it won't happen again. Done. This other member left happens just deal with it it's a business some people like it some people don't like it just continue move on and then i also worked a little bit more in the pot squeeze the turnout i could basically make it work and we released it yes today was the day we released pot squeeze and got some people already some podcasters and so far the, the feedback is good uh, it's still too early to see but the few people that looked at it, they say, okay, the results are really good. I was not expecting this. So that's good. That's really nice. There's still a lot to be done, a lot to be done to make it a great product. But at least I have basically sent, and Joe and I sent a bunch of messages to podcast agencies and to friends of us that are podcasters, and we are seeing if they like it, if they would be willing to pay for it. And that's it. Our first one week or 10 days product is done. And I have to be honest with you, it was more stressful than what I imagined to be. But was it worth it? Sure. Of course, it's always, always worth it. That's what we're here for, to build more cool stuff and to somehow, product by product, help others to in their lives, you know? I think the hard the hard thing about it, the hard thing about being an indie hacker is when I was telling you about cold showers, one of the reasons why they are effective and why people can do it is, is that because, first of all, you control it. It's very controllable. Whenever you want to get out, you can. Whenever you want to turn off the water, you can. Or you already know how how long they will be. You know, okay, it will be around three minutes, four minutes. But then the hard thing is, imagine taking a cold shower that you don't know how long it will be, or, yeah, let's, let's say an uh, uh, ice plunge or something, that you don't know how long it will be. And it, you don't know, it, it's, it depends on you, but you don't know what to do. And it can be that you are always doing stuff, but you will never get out of, of this ice plunge until you eventually die <laughs> from hypothermia. <laughs> That's basically what indie hacking is. 
I know, maybe not as dark, but it is. Like, you never know. You never know. You're always doing a bunch of stuff. And it, it might be over tomorrow because you hit the jackpot. But even then, even if you do that, you it depends what the jackpot is or how the amount of money you get in this jackpot. But, yeah. That's why it's hard and that's why it's a lifestyle. That's why it's a lifestyle. That's what I kind of figured out. Is... You cannot say that taking a cold shower is a lifestyle. It's a habit that you adapt, okay? But it's not a lifestyle. A lifestyle is something different. A lifestyle is something that becomes part of your life, of every aspect of your life. And with that, I mean, it's not only your work life, it's also your personal life, the way you see the world. That's what, li what a lifestyle is. And every one of us, we have a lifestyle. Sometimes it doesn't feel that because you only feel that you have a lifestyle when your lifestyle is different than the others. And if you live in society, you mostly we have the same lifestyle. So it just feels, okay, this is life. But then when you see someone, let's say a surfer, right? Or um, as someone like working as a sports, like Formula One or tennis, right? That we were talking about in the last episode when... Basically, they are always traveling. Every every week they're traveling and, and attend another event and another sport competition. That's a different lifestyle. That's a different way to live life, right? And that's what I think indie hacking is. It's just another way to live life. It's it's <laughs> and and to make that compatible with with others, with your friends, with your partners. Uh, people that live a different lifestyle, it's just an extra effort. It's just an extra effort that you need to make. Something that you need to be to take into account. And you need to think, okay, yeah, we'll have different lifestyles and we'll need to live them differently and we need to make them work. So, yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is that even after two years almost, uh... I'm still not super used to this lifestyle. <laughs> I'm still not. Uh, it's weird because I'm not used to that, but I cannot live without it. Yeah, that's the weird thing. That's really weird thing. But yeah, I will continue narrating it here because this podcast and you are probably the best decision I've made in this whole journey. I have grown so much by just sharing my feelings and thoughts with you and with the guests I have here in the, in the episodes. It taught me to open up much more and and to explore feelings and thoughts. A lot of times I just come here and I speak and I I don't really, I don't plan it. It's just whatever comes out, you know? So I really appreciate you again for, for listening to the Wannabe Entrepreneur and for somehow witnessing my own indie journey and I'm excited to witness yours as well so let me know if you have any questions or if you just want to chat at WB Tiago you can also become a member of the community our WB community our podcast community uh, indie hacking community on Slack it's uh, 10 bucks per month or you can just join the Slack it's completely fine you can just join as a guest you don't pay and you see what we discuss, you you can chat with me and the links will also be in the show notes. Again, thank you so much to today's sponsor, socialjuice.io. It's a great way for you to collect your testimonials for your product and video testimonials. And we have a discount for you. So just make sure to check it out in the show notes. And that's it. That's another wannabe entrepreneur. See you next time. If you arrived this far, you are a good listener. Good listener. Thank you.